in this topic we will be discussing another aspect of multinationals reaction to uh, repatriation process and that is calculating the return on investment on the expatriation process the amount of investment that you make on the person who is sent on an international assignment and the benefit that you get out of that person is directly related to the repatriation process uh how is it related to the repatriation process uh let's discuss that number 1 is that expatriates are quite expensive uh particularly expatriates from first world advanced countries so from uh people who are sent on international assignments from america canada us um, uh, uk the european countries the first world countries uh when they are sent on international assignments they are quite expensive uh that is why the multinationals they try to localize positions through the employment of uh, home country nationals people who are uh, um sorry the host country nationals people who are um uh, belong to the host country but it is not always possible and not strateg always strategically correct to employ host country nationals because there is a lot of transfer of knowledge a uh, transfer of skills and transfer of the strategic objectives of the organization that has to be done through the people of the organization and that is why people need to be sent on the international assignments um in that is why uh, but but cost is something which a very which is a very important aspect of uh, expatriate management and that is why um, uh, many firms organizations they are moving towards the local plus compensation of uh, parent country nationals and third country nationals uh, we had discussed about the approaches to compensation and local plus is the one which takes into account the local context as well as the organization's context as well and that is why uh, short term and non standard assignments are also being focused rather than a traditional expatriate career uh, however this is something which cannot be ignored all the time and lot of uh, uh, money and uh, investment is done on the international assignees uh and uh, survey data shows that cost containment is one of the major primary drivers of expatriate assignment you want to manage it in the minimum possible money but still a survey in 1991 it's like something like 30 years ago uh found that uh, a traditional a usual us multinational uh, spends about 1 million dollars on an expatriate assignment so that is the magnitude 30 years ago so you can add the inflation rate and um, uh, you can uh, calculate how much would it be um, costing the organization at this time uh, it is also found that if one in four expatriates exits within one year of repatriation it turns out to be a substantial human capital and financial loss to the organization so if one in four char mein se ek jo aapka international assignee hai agar wo wapas aake ek saal ke andar quit kar jata hai jo ki aapne case study mein aapko yaad hoga when bolova quitted after 6 months uh, because of poor repatriation process so it is something which is detrimental and substantially uh creates a loss uh for the organization so when we are talking about return on investment a repatriation process is very much important because if the person exits the organization without transferring the uh, the uh, basic learning that he has taken from the international assignment and uh, implementing it in the uh, home country then it would be a substantial loss for the organization so that is a very important aspect but when we talk about defining a return of honest investment it is something which is very much complicated because um, it is first of all very difficult to define what is the return uh, what do you consider to be a return uh, many organizations they responded on Uh, accomplishing the assignment objectives at the expected cost so 
if you are able to accomplish the assignment objective at the expected cost this is a good roi this is a good return on ex, uh, investment but companies they varied their responses from 96% uh, companies said that yes this is the way to calculate roi in 2002 and then only 10% said that in 2004 and then 70% again said that in 2011 so you can see the amount of variation about in perception of what is return on investment um carrying that forward a meaningful definition of return on investment should include a cost benefit analysis including analysis of financial and non financial data measured against the purpose of the assignment so it must be taken into account what was the purpose of this assignment and then what were the financials involved in it and then what was the non financial aspect of the benefits and costs that were incurred regarding that and that makes it something which is really complicated for example if you are talking about calculating the costs so costs are number one direct costs which are okay easy to measure and easy to uh, to uh, get information about for example the direct costs are the relocation expenses and itemized compensation package and other international assignee entitlements so whatever is spent financially on the organization on on the international assignee by the organization is the direct cost but then there are many indirect or intangible costs that are difficult to measure difficult to measure and what are those intangible costs the those intangible costs are expatriate failure if the person is unable to complete the assignment uh, under performance if the person is not able to perform according to the objectives of the assignment and then the opportunity cost of not hiring a host country national uh, that is also a part of the cost as well and that is something which also should be included in calculating the cost on the other hand when you are calculating the benefits it is also something which is quite uh, complicated uh, placing a monetary value on benefits is definitely a challenge um because there are a number of intangible benefits uh, uh the completion of the assignment is not only the intangible benefit of the international assignment there are many intangible benefits and those are mostly tacit and person bound uh, every person is brings different type of intangible um uh, intangible benefits from a particular international assignment and you cannot and it is something which is tacit it is not something which is explicit it is something which is tacit something which cannot be actually pinned down or explicitly measured or stated out uh what type of um, benefits uh, that are tacit and person bound are well the, the knowledge and skills transfer kitna aapne knowledge transfer kiya kitna logon ko sikhaya kitni skills aapne transfer ki kitna aapne logon ke andar capacity building ki kitna aapne unko enable kiya agar aap bahut acche tarike se ye kar rahe hai itne acche tarike se ye kar raha hai ki aap wahan pe international assign uh, assignee ki zarurat hi nahi hai host country nationals hi uh, organization ko manage kar lenge then it is something which is of a high benefit for the organization but if you did not uh, transfer anything at all if you did not build any capacity over there it is something which is not going to be either reflected in the cost or the benefits which are uh, uh, which are being calculated then another um, uh, aspect of it is the management development jo um, international assignee khud jata hai uh, kisi bhi international assignment ke upar uski development jo hai वो कितनी होती है तो ये इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द असाइनमेंट इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द इंडिविजुअल इट डिपेंड्स ऑन हाउ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मैनेजेस द एक्सपेट्रिएशन एंड रिपेट्रिएशन प्रोसेस सो इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द लर्निंग कल्चर ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट डिपेंड्स ऑन सो मेनी आस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट इट इज समथिंग दैट कैन नॉट बी पिन डाउन एज ए समथिंग विच इज ऑफ ए मॉनिटरी वैल्यू इट इज एन इनटेंजिबल बेस्ट बेनिफिट एंड देन थर्डली Uh, the intang uh, intangible benefits of the international assignment is the relationship and the networking that a person is able to do so uh, how much relationship building how much networking 
what type of networks does it does he build are they strong networks are the relationship reliable are the relationships going to uh, be beneficial in the long run it is something that you cannot say it is something that you cannot measure so that is something again which is difficult to be uh, calculated in monetary terms so uh, when you are calculating the be the benefits sides or side of the return on investment occasion uh, uh, equation it is something uh, which is difficult to measure because it is difficult to measure the intellectual social and human capital gains that are uh, that are reaped out of an international assignment and therefore it is difficult to measure the return on investment um of an international assignment but uh, it is something which is doable because uh, it is always possible to um to draw some kind of information out of subjective data as well that is something which social sciences researchers do and if your uh, human resource management department is strong and knows how to measure these various different aspects of uh, the um uh, the processes of the human resource if they are, they know how to measure that it is possible to calculate the return on investment on the international uh, assignment and what the organization has gained out of it and what it has spent as cost so these are the different aspects which must be taken into account while calculating the cost the direct cost as well as the indirect cost as well as the benefits the uh the um, uh, tangible benefits as well as the intangible benefits these are the ones which must be taken into account while uh, calculating the return on investment equation of an international assignment